being 4 p.m. on Monday, March 7th, I will call the meeting to order and ask the assistant to call the roll, please. Councilor Bidwell? Here. Councilor Carney? Present. Councilor LaVarge? Present. Councilor O'Donnell? Present. Okay, everyone being here, I'll ask if there's any public comment and seeing none, we'll move right into our item number three on the agenda, which is departmental presentation. And thank you for coming to visit us, uh, Police Chief Jody Castor. And uh, we'll be prepared for you to just turn it over to you. Absolutely. Okay, very good. All right. I think I last updated the, the Public Safety Committee in October, so I can give you some new updates on what we've been working on since then so that you know, uh, are up on Police Department news. I'm glad to report that we've actually filled no promotions since the last time, which is good. It's nice to have the stability after all the retirements with the former chief leaving and the captains and the lieutenants. It was a lot of change in short order, so it's nice to have the stability of everyone working in their current positions right now. Uh, we have one of our newer officers, Matt Montini, has been selected to be a drug recognition expert. DREs is the acronym. We have two on our department right now. These are folks who work specially uh, and target people who are impaired, driving impaired, under the influence of drugs. Uh, we were, we've definitely seen an uptick in the number of drivers we've had who are impaired by drugs. And it's a little trickier for our officers to manage when they're out on the street because you don't smell it and, and you can tell that the person might be off, but it's more challenging to be able to really identify and then be able to develop probable cause to make an arrest. So there's only like 80, 85 DREs in the whole Commonwealth. We have two on Northampton PD and we're adding Matt Montini who will be uh, our third DRE. So that is uh, an asset to our department, certainly. It's a very lengthy training. It's a two week training and then he goes out to Arizona um, to do one week of assessments. It's actually all free as well. Uh, the officers have to be selected and um, pass kind of a number of tests in order to be selected for this because it's a fair amount of medical knowledge and training that they get as well. So Matt's been picked for that. Josh Wallace is the department's newest SRO. He's been working in the school since September. Uh, he's primarily assigned to the high school. Uh, he's, he has an office in there and that's under a grant. It's a 15-month grant. It ends at the end of August. So for the new school year, it will come to an end and then I'll sit down with the superintendent and our intent is certainly to continue to keep the position filled using department funding, but right now we're lucky enough to have that grant. And we'll sit down and talk about, you know, whether or not he will stay. Right now he's very dedicated to high school because of the limitations of the grant. But one thing we'll be discussing is we hope to be able to expand his duties to cover some of the other schools uh, as well. Uh, we have a new uh, liaison officer, Dennis Liptak, volunteered to serve as our senior citizen liaison officer. We wanted, we realized that we get special requests from members of the senior citizen community at times, sometimes just to come in and do uh, informational trainings on identity theft or fraud, email scams, that sort of thing. We thought it would be useful to have this type of officer, and Officer Liptak uh, volunteered and was selected. He's a great fit for this, and so he'll be making connections with folks in different areas that we've identified where he can go out and meet folks and, and uh, hand out his card and be available if, if need be. Uh, as for staffing, uh, we had six officers graduate from the West Springfield or Springfield Police Academy uh, just in February, so all six of those officers are now in the field training program, so you may see two officers riding around in a cruiser together. That usually means that the person driving is one of our newest additions, and the person in the passenger seat is a field training officer. So with these six on, and then we've also hired two additional officers who will begin the academy in March, we will be fully staffed. Uh, that will last until April 14th when we have a retirement, so that's okay. Uh, one under is much better than we've been. We've been running uh, significantly short staff for a while, and it hasn't allowed us to do some of these other things that we, we know need attention as well. So uh, we're happy to, to have that and to, to get back up to pretty full staffing and, and operate from there. Uh, when I moved into the chief's position, I met with all the supervisors. We made a list of goals, things we wanted to accomplish, both internally for the department, our own operations and policies, as well as service to the community and things that we thought we could be doing better. Uh, we've accomplished a bunch of those goals, uh, one being we implemented new detail software, which is essentially how road jobs are handed out. We were using a paper and, paper and pen system prior, and this is a, we do like 100 of these jobs per week, sometimes 200 in the busy seasons, it kind of depends, but that was hard to manage, and this is a much more efficient and, and uh, 
hands out jobs in a more equitable basis. So we've implemented that new software. Uh, we've also added our new community outreach officers, two assigned to the downtown area, one assigned up to Florence. They've been very busy going out into businesses, meeting folks, going to events in their areas. Uh, I know that uh, we've gotten very good feedback on, on that so far. Uh, we've also designated a number of liaisons, multicultural, religious. I just spoke about the senior citizen. Uh, we had already had an LGBTQ liaison. So these are officers who have specialized training, and they're kind of a, a bridge uh, for members of any of those specialized communities to our police department. Uh, we also implemented a Coffee with a Cop program that runs once a month. So we've been doing that. I don't know if any of you have been to those or seen them, but our officers go out into different cafes and sit down for a few hours, chat with members of the public. Uh, we, we've gotten uh, very good feedback on that as well. It's been a good program. Uh, we made some changes to some internal policies that are probably less interesting for you to hear about, but exciting for us. <laughs> so some on the, on the hiring and selection process and some other uh, policies that we developed. Uh, we also took a staff photo. That was on our list. Uh, last one done was 1955. So this one's in color. Uh, big change from the one before that, so we're excited. We didn't get everyone in it, but we got a, a lot of folks, and that was a, a, a big deal for us, and that's uh, been up in our station. Uh, we also uh, brought a training to the department that targets uh, diversity and cultural awareness. Many of you may be following everything that's going on in the news. Uh, certainly, the, the Black Lives Matter banner uh, going up spurred a lot of really interesting conversation, I think caused a lot of you know reflection on us and our department and how we're interacting with the community. Um, this was a training that I've been working at since August, well before the banner went up. I thought it was important when, when I took the job over as chief, uh, so it happened to kind of coincide. Uh, initially, the cost of that was going to be very extensive because not the cost of the trainers, but just the overtime for the officers. Uh, but and we divided it into three groups. It's a one-day training, so we have like 20 people going into each group. And the officers stepped up and really volunteered to move their hours around. So it's not costing us. The first group, I think, cost us no overtime, just the cost of having the trainers come and do the training. And from what I heard, it was it was really good training. It was on implicit bias, systematic racism. And it wasn't just a kind of a lecture style where you're learning about these terms, but it was more interactive, thinking about you know, how, you know know your perspective as a community, meaning you, the officer, and then other people's perspective, how they may view you. So it's a little more kind of introspective training, which is not traditional for police, quite honestly. It's not the way we uh, normally go attend trainings and receive training. It's a little bit different. Um, the instructors that we use specialize in this, and they're professors from Vermont. We usually get trained by other police leaders and, and officers from around the state. So this has been a good training so far. We've done one day thus far. We have one more scheduled, and I hope to get the next one in probably in the next fiscal year, uh, hopefully, as soon as we have the funding for that. So that's going well. Um, we're also putting in some new uh, laptops in the cruisers. The ones that we had in there before were really designed for desktop use. Uh, they, they weren't practical. They didn't do well going over bumps, um, and they didn't do well in weather, and they blocked view out of the cruiser. So we did some research and are getting uh, better laptops that are designed for being in a cruiser and being out in the different elements. So, and they have some other great features like <coughs> privacy and that sort of thing. So those are the goals we've accomplished. It's been a lot. They're kind of varied technology, policy, morale, all that kind of stuff, and some good community outreach. Uh, some goals that we're still working on. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to add a community services administrative sergeant to our staff. I'm actually not asking for a whole new position, but I'm asking to transition one of our patrol officer positions to an administrative or community outreach sergeant. Uh, what's happened over the years with policing is just simply that the, the expectations of us and the amount of forms that need to be filled out and, and things that need to be written and done and grants applied for, the amount of administrative work is a lot. It's really expanded. And how we've responded to that is really taken all that administrative work and kind of spread it over all the officers, sergeants, lieutenants, captains, myself. Everyone kind of carries an equal load. Um, but the problem with that method is that as we continue to pile on all these administrative tasks, it means that our supervisors don't get out on the street as much. So when we have, I just mentioned, the six new officers that are in training, they're going to be out driving around, and they, they might need a, a sergeant to be able to be on a call and give them some guidance when need be. It's a very important uh, kind of component of how we do our jobs. Uh, so I want to be able to take some of that burden off of those sergeants and lieutenants so they can be really focused on the work that's going on on the street. So I'll be speaking uh, with the mayor about the potential of adding that, positions, uh, that position for FY17 uh, when I meet with them later this month. 
Uh, we're also struggling in the IT department. We have one officer. IT is one of those things also that, you know, 20 years ago when I started, we had computers with, with green, you know, screens on them, and that was it. You know, it's come a long way. Uh, so when we began to implement software, it was kind of slowly but surely over 20 years, at first we took a detective who had an interest in computers, and he was like, oh yeah, I can oversee that, and that was a fine method. Of course, over the years now, we have like roughly, roughly 20 or 30 different types of software programs that operate within the station. Um, they over they maintain our, our interview rooms, our exterior surveillance, all of our uh, computers that I just spoke about that are in the cars, how we interact with the RMV, with criminal records, with our own internal gigantic um, computer system called IMC or Perform. So these things simply require a ton of attention. You know, we have a lot of computers within the building that require attention. And our current situation is that we took an officer, and this has been in place for many years, who had an IT interest and now he's a police officer and an IT person. Uh, but really, he's full-time IT split between the police department and the fire department. And the fire department has a ton of needs as well. You know, we've just all become much more reliant on technology. So at this point, we really need some additional help in that area. And, and I've, I've chatted with um, the director of the city's IT department and said we, we need this. He knows we need it. I think it's part of a, a larger plan to really um, think about how we're going to have IT be in our building and, and hopefully um, have another person or another part-time person or some potential solution in this area. I don't know what the solution will be, but it's something that's on our goals list to be able to better um, serve our staff. It's really, we do climate surveys in the building every six mm -hmm. months and we ask them for feedback. How are things going? What's working? What's not working? And IT stuff uh, consistently comes up as problematic. It's very frustrating for them when they're trying to write a report, the computer crashes, or they can't view surveillance video from somewhere because we don't have the most updated Flash Player or Adobe or whatever else. The computers just need to be maintained on a much more consistent basis. And it's certainly through no fault of our existing IT guy. He's just stretched extremely thin. He does a fantastic job, but there's just a lot of IT work to be done. So that is on our radar. Um, we're also in the midst of making a uh, rec uh, recruitment video. We've paired up with MTTV. Um, that's at no cost. They just volunteered to do that. So that's a fun project. It's something that most of most police departments that are larger have this. We know it's a good way to draw people in. And definitely the number of people interested in taking our entrance exam has historically just kind of been going downhill. That's true nationally, unless people are interested in public service, the, in policing and, and these sorts of jobs. It's shift work. and kind of a lot of scrutiny that the police are under, and I think less people are attracted to the field in general. So we really need to work on being proactive about how we recruit, and, and having videos is, is one way to do that. So we're doing that, that's so kind of a fun project. Um, certainly on my goals list is completion of the firing range. Uh, it's actually a closet right now, a very large closet. Uh, so we would like to, to finish that. Uh, it needs some work on the air handling unit, which was partially completed. We had the unit, um, the air handling unit is on the roof, but inside we need some filters in place and a wall, so we're working on getting an estimate on that. Uh, we have some grant funding to do just that portion of it, and then we need to be able to shoot at something, which is called a trap, and the trap is the thing at the end that, that catches the bullets. So we need that, and we also need some baffles in there for sound. Uh, Really, that's kind of about it for right now. That would at least be enough to get us so that we can start shooting in there and not shoot up at Bryan Road School and, and have to, <laughs> you're welcome, <laughs> and not have to pay for that. It's a, it's a high cost that we pay for our fees to, to the, to the uh, Northampton Revolver Club up there. It costs us 6000 a year. Um, and then also we pay 6000 to a, a company called Blue Line, which is a kind of shoot, don't shoot scenario. It's a big trailer. It looks like an 18-wheeler, and we shoot in there. Um, that's not every year, but it's like every other. So we won't have to do that anymore either uh, once we're able to get all the tools into our, our range. So I'm very hopeful and optimistic that we'll be able to move forward with that. Um, certainly always a challenge. To, I'm, I'm continuing to work on increasing the diversity in our department. Uh, I, Without changing our hiring standards, certainly we still have very high standards. We, you know, uh, use the same hiring strategies that we always have as far as interviewing and reviewing candidates. But we're really trying to change where we're recruiting, and, and we've changed uh, 
our recruiting page. We have more women and people of color represented on our web page. We know this is a successful strategy. Um, so we're really looking to get that number up a little bit. Right now, if you look at our police department, we have eight women and we have um, two people who are of any ethnicity or race. So we really would like to uh, improve those numbers. So right now, we're at like, what we call us 15% of our department is, is uh, made up of a non-white male. That's the easiest way to give you that stat. So, um, you know, nationwide, that's pretty similar as well. And in fairness, our community doesn't have a lot of racial or ethnic diversity, so we're always looking to draw people in. Uh, and we do have a lot of women, and we're working on, on drawing more women. We recruit now at Smith and Mount Holyoke. We hadn't always done that historically. Uh, but what we know is that a lot of women who are entering into the field of policing, they may not be a criminal justice major, um, just because they never really considered the job, and we need to be you know, open to that. We have a lot of people working in our department who were not criminal justice majors in college. Um, English majors, psychology, sociology, all very important. So we're being pretty, uh, you know, changing the way we're recruiting and not just targeting the CJ colleges, essentially. So we're looking to continue that. Um, certainly, you may have noticed in the paper we're, we're, we have a lot of focus on targeting uh, narcotics dealers uh, in areas where we've had a lot of reports of people who are dealing. We have moved some of our patrol staff. We've taken them off patrol and we have put them in plain clothes and they're kind of assisting the detective bureau. The detective bureau is, they have a lot of cases already, but we've really, that we, this has to be something that we do. So we've taken our patrol officers. They're not detectives, they're not making any more money, but they're just, um, working with the Detective Bureau. Uh, they've been very productive thus far. We've had a couple of really um, big grabs, uh, folks that have been dealing with, with quite a lot of stuff. Uh, and we've been glad to get that off the street, get the, the drugs off the street. Um, so we're continuing to, to target that. Um, also working with other agencies to conduct some mutual aid drills, to work on interoperability. A uh, major lesson after 9-11 was how different agencies interact with each other when it comes to mutual aid. Uh, as far as radios go, as far as you know, codes, names, who's in control, <coughs> incident command, there's kind of a lot to it. Um, so we have the captain of operations on our department is part of a, I was doing this as captain and I've handed this off when I moved into my new position, but they have uh, meetings month, every other month uh, with representatives from surrounding communities and we're working on doing some drills. We'll start with small scale drills, maybe later in the summer, in the fall. We're not sure on a time frame. It takes quite a bit of effort to, to plan it and decide kind of how we're going to go about it without costing uh, too much money to any of the agencies involved. Uh, but we want to make sure that we, we've done that. So we're working on that plan as well. Uh, also, uh, seeking out uh, training for our own officers for their, you know, managing stress and just this job is, is uh, it's a difficult job, and, and certainly, as I've mentioned, a lot of scrutiny over police, which is which is appropriate, but certainly uh, under the microscope, and it's challenging uh, for folks to live that way and, and uh, see the things that everyone sees and, and work shift work, not always get a ton of sleep, and there's a lot to it. So we're looking at bringing in uh, some trainers to work with our officers on managing stress. So those are the goals that we're working on. Uh, beyond those very specific goals, just in general, kind of what's on my mind as the chief of this community and, and what am I paying a lot of attention to, uh, certainly the, the heroin epidemic is huge. You know, it's, it's huge nationally, it's huge from, from the, you know, Governor Baker. Uh, you may have seen a lot of, you know, grants and, and people making statements of different efforts and the Gloucester Police Chief has caught, caught a lot of attention uh, for that program. So. We're certainly tracking it. Uh, so far this year, we've had 15 overdoses in Northampton, two deaths out of those 15 overdoses. That's since January 1st. So that's only the ones that get reported to us. So not everyone calls us. Uh, you can get Narcan now at different locations throughout the community. Um, Tapestry Health is, is probably the one uh, that people would be most familiar with. So that's bystander Narcan uh, is what we would call that. And so there are people out there who are likely overdosing but are being saved by bystander Narcan and are never being reported to the police and are not going to the hospital. So, you know, we definitely are attentive to this. Uh, you may have seen in the paper recently, we just started a new program called DART. It's an acronym for a Drug Abuse Response Team. This is another program that's at no cost to the community, but we asked officers if they would volunteer to participate in this. We had officers volunteer, we selected three. 
these officers have now had training in what's available for local resources for people who are struggling with addiction. How it works, somebody overdoses uh, one day and then the next day the officer comes into work, they check the log, they can see there was an overdose, they go and knock on the person's door or try to track them down wherever they are and talk with them and say, listen, you know, we're not here for an enforcement purpose, you're not in any trouble, but we're worried about you and we want to get you some resources. So they may sit with them for however long that may take, uh, try to get them to make some phone calls, try to set up an assessment, get them connected to other folks in the area who are who are resources for this. Um, so, so far, we've definitely had one case which we would consider to be a success, and success is really just the person was receptive to it, went, and is now part of a program, uh, Suboxone program locally. So we're optimistic about this program. It's certainly not going to catch everyone. We may have people overdose in our community who are not from here that we won't. Those DART officers are not going to be going to other cities or states to track folks down. But at least it will be some people uh, that they can catch. Uh, and another component of that program is definitely educating family members and friends on the access to bystander Narcan so that they know it's out there. You can get it and also to educate them on the Good Samaritan Law so they know that if you do see someone overdose, call us. Like, don't be afraid that we're going to come and arrest you because there are, there's heroin around, there's needles around. Just call us and, and there's a Good Samaritan Law that prevents us from charging folks with, with any sort of crimes in relation to that. So uh, that's the DART program. Uh, as I said, we're very optimistic about that. The heroin epidemic on my mind. Another thing on my mind, uh, race relations and community trust. Huge deal obviously going on in this community. I mentioned it earlier. Um, there's been a lot of uh, you know, things going on in the newspaper. I was invited to be part of a panel uh, two weeks ago. You mentioned the flu. I had the flu. It wasn't pretty. I listened at home. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, I wanted to participate in the panel and I wasn't able to do that. Uh, but my understanding is there's going to be a second portion of that and I've agreed to, to participate. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I really think that uh, part of the solution to this is definitely everyone kind of being open-minded about hearing ideas and hearing perspectives and coming up with really uh, some strategies for us to move forward from here. So it's, it's an ongoing issue. Uh, I mentioned uh, the training that, that I brought into the department. Uh, that was well received. The officers had good things to say about it. I have a meeting with the two people that taught it uh, next week maybe. And they're going to talk to me about what they heard from officers and what they think we might be able to do better. So I think they'll have some good insight about that as well. Uh, what else is on my mind? Youth substance use and access. Uh, you know, we have, there's a lot of focus right now as part of the heroin epidemic on like, how does that start? There's a lot of focus on youth use and looking at how, what, how people start, you know, what, what was their first drug, how they started using prescription medications. Some really interesting research out there about, uh, believe it or not, like red flag times being when you have your um, teeth turned, your, your um, wisdom teeth taken out. Is that being a really dangerous time for you? Because at the time when traditionally doctors may have prescribed uh, opiates and, and that may not be necessary, it may be necessary, I'm not the doctor, but just the time to, as a parent, to think, oh wait, like this is, Normally you think, oh, my kids are going to have their teeth out. That's fine, you know. Uh, but let me really pay attention to this. Like, what are they going to be prescribed? How much are they getting? And thinking about um, that kind of, you know, when parents are having that interaction with their kids. Um, also, what's being sold in our local community. There's, uh, you may have seen in the paper things like salvia, kratom. You may have heard those terms. Those are drugs that are on the market. I'm going to use the term drugs. They're not classified. They're not illegal uh, in our community. It's one of those things where the laws can't really keep up with the changing substances that are available. Um, there were a couple of, of um, shops in our community that I worked with, Meredith O'Leary, uh, with the Board of Health, um, and we just identified that these stores were selling some of these substances. We had received complaints from other communities that kids were buying things at these shops. And what, then what did you call them again? Kratom and salvia. Oh, I see. Yeah, the two, the two drugs. Uh, so the kids were buying things here and then going back to their communities and in some cases had bad reactions to them. No one no one died, but they were had some extreme reactions, had to go to the hospital, kids were in dangerous situations. So What is that? Kratom. 
It's it's just another it's just a drug. I mean, it, there's so many out there that fall under different names. You can it's K R A T U M. You can like Google it. it's, it's an herb. Like they're all right. Yeah, they're all the herbs powder. that are treated with another substance over there. It's, it's, yeah. The the thing is too, if you made that illegal today, it could be slightly modified, and then tomorrow it could be called something else and sold legally. So it's really challenging for the laws to keep up with these evolving drugs. So uh, we met with, with store owners and simply asked them if they would remove some of these items, and they did actually agree to remove the, the kratom, or the salvia, I'm sorry. They're removing the salvia from their shelf. So that's that's a win for us. It's just kind of us collaborating, working together, saying we're worried. We would appreciate it if you would do that, and they did. So we're pleased with that. Um, certainly something else uh, that's on my mind is the internal morale and retention issue within our own agency. Um, like I said before, it's a tough time to be a police officer. Uh, we have a lot going on in our community, there's a lot going on in the country. And I mean, I've just noticed as well as the rest of the administration and supervisors that people, you know, you feel a little bit differently when you're walking down the street as a police officer these days. I think years ago, you, there was a lot of pride and felt good and most people were like, hey, good, you know. Uh, but now there's more negativity. Uh, uh, around that, and, and whether that's earned or not, it's not for, for me to judge, and, and it's it, honestly, that's not what I'm focused on. I'm focused on what I can do to make people still love their jobs, still love serving their community, and stay stay with this police department and stay in the field of policing. So we're always working on new things within the building to kind of keep people, make sure they feel supported, and, uh, and, and give them new opportunities, new challenges, all those things that make people love, love their jobs and love coming into work. Um, and then finally, also on my mind, is community policing and outreach efforts, which I've already touched on. You know, We're doing a lot in that area, certainly. I think that policing in the future, this is kind of the core of the future of policing, is really working with community members, being open to criticism, being out there, being visible, being there to answer questions, uh, being as transparent as you can be while still respecting the, the privacy of your you know, staff members and such. So um, those are the things that I'm that are on my mind as I as I lead the department and, and make policy changes and, and program changes to the city and, and serve members of the public. So uh, yeah, so that's pretty much my overview. We have a bunch of grants, we have a lot of calls. We had like thirty eight thousand calls last year. That's a lot. We're busy. Yeah, the department's busy. Uh, definitely we get a lot of calls centered around you know, the downtown area, a lot of calls related to mental health, um, substance abuse, you know, you know stuff's going on. So the officers are doing a, a great job. The midnight shift is doing a phenomenal job with, with um, OUI arrests. And it's hard to, to be able to articulate how great they're doing because I you know, we can talk numbers or whatever, but the, the proof that they're doing so well is that you may have noticed we have not had any horrible OUI accidents with serious injury, which we have had, um, you know, in years past. And I think and I think that's directly attributed to the fact that they are out there every night stopping cars and making arrests for OUI to prevent those bad accidents from happening. So I, I really, the midnight shift is just doing an incredible job uh, at making our, our midnight streets safer. So. Uh, yeah, everyone's doing a good job in the department and we're continuing to chug forward. Thank you, that was quite substantive. Yes, really. you're welcome. Very, very good. Um, ask uh, counselors if you have any comments or questions. Chief? Sure. Yes. Th th thank you, that was, that, was, that was very, very helpful. Sure. Um, uh, an another committee of the council for community resources committee has been asked to look at downtown issues, mm -hmm. the state of downtown economy, what's affecting it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious if you could say a little bit more about the trends you are. You referred to downtown reports and yeah. a couple of a couple of your outreach officers working downtown. And by mm -hmm. the way, I've heard excellent feedback uh, 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 about those outreach officers downtown. Okay. But I'm just curious what mm -hmm. over over a two, three, four year period, what, what are what are the what are the trends downtown? What is, is there more crime, less crime? What's the makeup of the crime? Mm. Yeah, downtown has a lot of the same issues. I actually wouldn't say too much that much has changed when it comes to downtown. The issues, we meet with business owners whenever they ask us to. Well, you meet with the chamber and, and 
there's a lot of business owners that are, you know, sometimes frustrated at some of the stuff that goes on in the downtown area. And it's been, it's been a good collaboration with them. Certainly, you know, whenever anyone has any issues or concerns, we tell them, call us, we'll send someone. Uh, but most of the stuff that's going on downtown is panhandling is a call that we frequently get. Uh, if you looked at our log and printed it out, you would see reports of panhandling. Uh, people are allowed to panhandle. We, there's no law against it. Some business owners had thought, you know, that maybe there was, or, but there's not. They, they know, most know that very well because it's been something that's been discussed many times. Uh, but there isn't. Uh, we do ask uh, folks who are panhandling to be on, uh, on the, the, the left side of the sidewalk, kind of where the parking meters are. So, and they're very good about that. So in most cases, we have a good kind of understanding where people who are out playing music or who are asking for money are on the papers on, and, and that way it leaves the sidewalk unobstructed. Uh, if people are the other way with their back against the building or they're sitting with their feet out, you know, that does obstruct, obstruct the sidewalk. We ask people to move. Um, so that's probably the number one complaint that we get and that's how our downtown officers manage it. And I, they know everyone by name. The people who are panhandling know the officers and like, hey, can you get on that side of the street? So it's usually pretty good. Um, the other call is if I would call them mental health related. You know, someone is in the downtown area, uh, may appear to be dangerous or may appear to be or, or may appear to be threatening or making people feel uncomfortable um, because of their probably erratic behavior or unpredictable behavior. And the officers go, again, usually these are folks that we already know um, that we have spoken with before. And, uh, you know, uh, we just have conversation with them and, and usually that's the end of it. So most of the calls that we get, complaints for downtown, are resolved with a verbal warning or a conversation saying, please move or please do this, and that's the end of it. We don't have a ton of crimes in the downtown area. Um, every once in a while we'll have like a rash of, say, car breaks or business breaks, but those are few and far between. We had a few this summer. We had like three or four all in one or two week period. Um, it doesn't happen very frequently. So that's downtown. Those are the two, two big issues, panhandling and disturbances. And, and so, so th th there, there's nothing, there's never any, any ordinance that, that, that I know was attempted that, that, that designates mm -hmm. certain areas on the sidewalk. It's just sort of suggesting that folks move to this part of the sidewalk and for the most part there's compliance? Right, well there's an obstructing the sidewalk ordinance. So if you're obstructing the sidewalk, and we've always interpreted that to mean if you're in the way of where people walk. Mm -hmm. So we could write someone for obstructing the sidewalk if they sat with their back against the building and had a whole bunch of say bags around them and all that. You are obstructing the walking space. Mm -hmm. I, I can't think of the last time we've ever issued a citation right. for that because we do have that kind of mutual understanding. But that's the ordinance that we would use if, if we needed to do that. But like I said, can't think of the last time. And people do get frustrated. There are some groups and, and folks that have a lot of bags with them, and those are kind of piled out on the sidewalk with them at times because they don't have anywhere else to put them, and they're there for a couple long, but they don't want them to get stolen. Um, there's not too much we can do about that either, as long as they're not blocking where people walk. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's also an old ordinance on the books that says you can't use profane language on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm afraid that all of us have violated that from <laughs> time to time. Um, I'm just wondering, to, to your credit, you're doing so many innovative and specialized things in the police department, which is great for the city, the, the DART programming, the community outreach, and even the, the IT stuff. Seems to be How much of it, just out of curiosity, um, is funded with grant mm -hmm. opportunities from the state. It seems like it should, it should in theory at least. <laughs> um, yeah, most of the things that I've spoken about are, many are free, right? The, the people, the officers that have volunteered to do things, that's all free, that the, the training is nominal, we really, that we just eat, eat that. The SRO is grant funded. Okay. Um, the youth, youth alcohol grant that we have, so we target like parties or maybe downtown like the parking garage or areas that we know where we have kids who sometimes are drinking is grant funded. Just we have about a $5,000 grant for that right now. Um, the IT would be part of the regular operating budget. Yep. And, and I, don't, I don't know what will happen with that. I have no idea. The uh, community services sergeant would just be out of our regular budget, but that's not, I'm not asking for a new body. That would just be the difference between an officer's top pay and a, a sergeant position. 
Um, so that would come out of our budget. Um, the training for the, the cultural diversity training, that came out of our budget, but the officers moved all their hours. We had, if they had all done overtime, it would have cost us about $20,000. But the first group, there was, I, I think, none. That's what I'm thinking. Um, and the cost of the instructors was like twelve to 1500 So that's not too bad for two instructors for 20 people. Um, so yeah, so that came out of our training budget. I imagine other communities don't really approximate all the things that the city of Northampton does. You're doing in your department all these different programs. Mm -hmm. Or are they common? Um, it seems like you're doing a lot with the little, so. Or you're doing a lot without extra, mm -hmm. in some cases. And um, anyway, I, I think that's just very, very commendable. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes, Chief, is yeah. there an increase of drinking with our youths in the high school or in the schools? You know, I, I wouldn't be the best one to speak to that. I used to sit on, on uh, Paul McNeil oversees the, the high school group, and our SRO is now a part of that group, and he makes such great graphs, and he always had them up there. And you know, um, in general, I really think that the great majority of students are just doing the right thing. And you know, we tend to always focus on the people who are doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but in general, we've really seen some great, great reporting and declines in use. I know great declines in the use of, of uh, nicotine, the smoking, uh, declines in other areas. I, I can't give you great stats on that, and, I, and I'm not sure for drinking. I don't want to yeah. misspeak. But those stats are definitely out there. <laughs> I don't have them in my back pocket right now. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, well, I really appreciate your taking the time and keeping us uh, up to speed on what's been going on. Um, I don't know that we actually have you scheduled again this, this year. No, I, I, don't, don't, um, I don't think I am. Yeah. <clears throat> but it has always been the uh, practice of the Public Safety Committee, at any rate, that should there be any issue that you would like to bring up with us, mm -hmm. you could just contact me or contact Pam, and you know we could, just as long as we had time, um, actually would need to know the month previous to put you on the agenda, unless it's something that uh, um, requires immediate attention and, or just in your opinion you would like to meet with us. I'm sure that we could get around that and just get you in and put you on the agenda. And I think that that would be likewise if there was some issue that was going on in the city, if we wanted to, I, I, I know that you would make yourself available and we really appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. So if there isn't anything else for the chief, um, I would just say again, thank you for coming in and we'll just see you, see you next time. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right. So we can move right along to item number four on the agenda, which is the minutes of the previous meeting, which I turned it. Sent, and I just had a motion to approve. So I'll second it. And seconded. Thanks. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Opposed? Abstentions? Hearing none. That motion carries. And um, I did have under the next item, item five, Councilor Labarge uh, wrote to me and asked if she could, if we would consider changing our June 6th meeting date and time. Um, right now, June 6th at 4 p.m., we're scheduled to meet with parking enforcement. Um, I think you said you could meet later in that day at 5.30 or 6? Yes. Or, yes. or 5 the next safe. day. Or the next day, which would be June 7th. Right. Either so, way, I could do the 5.30. I do have a 4 o'clock meeting with... Um, the advisory committee for Dave Sullivan. I've been on it for four years. So it's at four o'clock to five. Would it be preferable to meet the next day on the Tuesday or is that a conflict for anyone? Because then we could keep still at the time, the 4 p.m. time. 
Um, does our administrative assistant have any preference or uh, conflicts? Is 5.30 available on the same day? Or? I, I prefer to move it to the following day at 4 okay. as opposed That's to fine. switching to 5.30. Okay. I, I could make that following day. Is that okay with you, Counselor? Uh, it's Tuesday the the, se seven. the seven. Is that does that conflict with the transportation and parking? No, that's okay. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to quickly look at the calendar myself. Thank you. Thank you. Um, June sixth. We're going to change that to June seventh at four p.m. Okay, and that works there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. If you, uh, I, I'll check the website and make sure, and I, I'm pretty sure that there was no um, confirmation from the parking department yet, so maybe they'll, you know, they'll be able to comment on the new date. Okay. All right. If you could just check, or check on that and get back with us. Um, I mean, if this room is taken, we could look at also the hearing room. Yep. All right, thank you. And then, um, Councillor Bidwell uh, put together, and you sent the toilet one too, right? Did everyone get that, or did you I, just I did, but I, but I just had one more question on our calendar. Oh, yeah, yeah. Before we move on. If you so I assume all these other dates are unchanged from the last time we looked at them. I assume this is as, as they were. Yeah, I think the ones that seem a little bit odd is like the, that one that's August 29th, where there's two yeah. in the month of August, has got to do with the fact that the first Monday is Labor Day. Right, right. And okay. I don't think, nothing's changed from when we originally. And my, my other question was, did, there was some talk of, um, uh, uh, if, if there was any particular topic that we would want mm -hmm. the department to focus on, to, to agree on that ahead of time so that we can right. provide that to them in advance. Right. Do, do we want to do that a month in advance? For example, at this meeting, should we talk about whether there's anything in particular we, we, we would like Parks and rec. rec to talk about? In addition, I would there be their normal? Yep. Uh, That's what it sounds like to me. I also um, think that I had put that on identify the topics for departmental presentations because the feedback that um, Lynn was getting from the department was they wanted to know what you wanted them to prepare. Okay. So I don't know if I can we do that, that month to month? Do you think? I mean, I, so, you know, I, I think you can tell them that we'll give them a month's notice if people are continuing to correspond with you on that. Like, for example, with Forbes Library that isn't meeting until October, um, I think that we can let them know at the end of August. Okay. All right. So just so that we don't have to spend all the time looking at each department and figuring out what specific things that we want for each. I think, I think giving them the month, the month, if we talk about that the month prior, and let them know. Um, yes. Or, what we did with social services and veterans, culture and recreation yep. is to talk to the department head that's coming in and talk about what they would like to bring forth yep. of concerns and that and then work out the agenda with them. Yeah, that's how we have it. That's how I, what I've asked right now, I've asked um, him to tell them that we're prepared to hear whatever is at the top of their priority list, however they would like to address yep. us and that we'll let them know if there's something in particular any, any counselor has. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask right now, um, I think it's an appropriate time to ask now, is there anybody who has some particular concerns that they would like the Director of Parks and Rec to address? Um, I'm, 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 I'm just curious how the, <clears throat> how the transition to the new headquarters will okay. affect things. I assume that's one of the things that we want to talk about. I'm just sort of curious over a period of years what trends they're seeing in enrollment in summer camps and just just mm -hmm. just, just overall overall uh, 
uh, we getting this correct? Enrollment. Um, do they feel that um, outreach in their programs to minority communities, uh, underserved communities, has 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 worked well? Is it do they do they need more resources to make that work better? Um, okay. Would it be more helpful for you, Pam, to have something? Is there more than those? No, those, those just off the top of my head. Okay. Be, that's a good one. Curious about. Okay, so <clears throat> I, I think it's not um, inappropriate for us to even send some of the, I mean, uh, over the, like, for example, give it over the next week if there's something that comes up, there's something that anybody thinks about in the next week or so, which is when Pam might, have you already gotten confirmation from Parks and Rec? Okay. That they're coming. That they're coming. And they and they have did they specifically ask what we would like or was it other department? Oh, they did. They, they all asked. They all asked. Okay. Um, they Parks did. and Rec. Um, you saw the email that I sent to the chief because she asked as well. Right. Um, and she was she was happy to, with the answer that I gave, which is for her to prioritize herself. She was happy with that. Right. Okay. Uh, I, I should say all of the ones that confirm have asked. Okay. So it's. Fire, Rescue, Parks and Rec, and the Health Department. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> since we don't meet with Fire and Rescue until May 2nd, I think that, you know, we can, yeah. we don't need to determine do it, do it, today do it, do it what we want to. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's probably, yep. Good. Can I can ask a question on a Please. different meeting? Um, parking enforcement. I wonder if the committee feels strongly that we do have community parking because we do have the Transportation and Parking Commission, which regularly interfaces with parking enforcement. And trust me, after those meetings, I have no more questions than personally. Mm -hmm. Others may, though, so I mm -hmm. pose the question. Um, I'll ask the other counselors, would you like to meet with parking enforcement? Would you like to hear from them on June 7th? My understanding was that, that they were at it. They're not part of the... Uh, mm -hmm. So it's on our calendar. I'll ask if there's anybody who feels like, or, I mean, if, whether we want to make a change in that calendar item, or would you prefer to leave it as is and meet with parking enforcement? May I make a suggestion for a substitution? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just, I mean, as a way, instead of parking enforcement, just to return to the idea I briefly mentioned last time, maybe, and, and Council Bidwell just alluded to today, can we have meetings that are about broader topics um, that maybe incorporate different departments? One that I thought would be interesting uh, would just be public access to information, how useful the website is, how easy it is for the public to get information in the city. And I thought maybe that would be appropriate for to combine the libraries and the information technology department. And if that were of interest to the committee, that could certainly, for example, substitute for the parking enforcement meeting. But again, that is four months, two, three months from now, and it's not necessary to make a decision today. But my okay. suggestion would be yeah, a topic that might be of general interest to the public. I like that. I okay. So do you want to think about this, and we'll take it up again um, next month? Do you want to think about this? And we don't, as Councilor O'Donnell said, we don't need to decide on this today. I would refer you to the chair on that. Um, just asking colleagues, would you prefer to just keep it on the, you know, keep it in the parking lot, so to speak, and we'll um, talk about it again? Or do you want to make that decision right now? Well, the only caution that I would have is that you're getting into budget season in June, so mm -hmm. we want to give that particular department as much notice as possible to yes. get right. ready your department or departments, whatever, however you decide, so. Right. Councilor Dallas, are you, so you, this would <clears throat> com combine what? Forbes and Lily with information, with, with IT. Combine Lily and I, Forbes, Lily and IT and, and move and them up. Move so them up to June 7th. Or, it, or yeah. if there's a, if there's a problem because of being in budget season, it could, it could stay. I actually, we could leave them. We could leave them on October third, and um, okay. We could leave. We could leave them with. So 
because it is a very busy time and mm -hmm. and we could in the meantime between now and may consider what else we might like to have because either way we're going to have open slots if we combine okay we're going to have two open slots mm -hmm. So, I mean, whatever the, yeah, the will of the committee is in terms of timing. Okay, why don't we, um, why don't we consider that as, as time goes on? So really what we're to ask, but it may require uh, Forbes and Lily to get together with IT to try to do a combined presentation. Yeah. Are we asking them <clears throat> to meet with, meet amongst themselves and then consider to come back? I guess just to flesh it out a little more briefly, I, I could see us hosting the public and making people aware that we're doing this. You know, come and talk about, so I've actually had from time to time people talk to me about the difficulty of finding some public information. And, you know, it might be of general interest. I, I don't know how often members of the public come to either public safety or SSBCR meetings in the past. I know sometimes they did, is that right, Council? Um, but maybe we could, um, just bill it, so to speak, as you know, this is a hearing on public access to information in the city and some of the key departments that have to do with public information, including mm -hmm. the libraries and IT. And we can invite all those, you know, those three entities to be here and make a presentation. I don't know if they have to coordinate in advance or not. We might want to develop questions in advance, like we've been talking about. Right. And then the public can share their concerns. I don't know if that would be successful or not or fruitful, but I think it can might try. be yeah. I think I, I think we should, uh, th that sounds great, okay. but I think we should look at it as October 3rd, if we could change with IT. IT hasn't gotten back to you yet, right? I, I don't know the answer to that. Lynn was on vacation. Oh, okay, okay. And all of the communications, they wanted to have them go through the mayor's office, so. Right, and we don't want to make too many changes just because that does require it, that all going through the mayor's office and or changing in time. So why don't we leave things as is? Um, oh, again, we, and, and since we have the two open slots, would you like to hear from parking enforcement? I know Councilor O'Donnell has, has said that since he chairs parking and transportation, he doesn't need to hear them. But I, I mean, if you would like to have any question or have any questions for parking enforcement, Councilor? I mean, otherwise we don't have anything scheduled, and we could even cancel. I don't want for a well, whole you, will, you will have to have the meet. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the June meeting. We may not. Get, we may have appointments. We may have appointments right. to take up on June seventh. Mm -hmm. So we'll just leave it as is right now. Um, we won't cancel with parking enforcement right away because they haven't gotten back to you yet anyway, right? Okay. So. You can think about it, and you can raise it again in April or in May. Okay. Okay, and if, mm -hmm. if by then they haven't gotten back to us and you don't have any interest in hearing from them, then we'll just tell them never mind, and we'll have appointments and evaluations, or mm -hmm. if something else comes up on in April or May that you'd like to... I just don't know that we should pull together that public access we should plan on that as soon as June 7th, um, just because, at least for the libraries, they are dealing with a lot of uh, budget things at that time, too, I would imagine. Well, we have time. We can, we can still get back to them. You, you haven't heard from any of these departments. Forbes and Lilly, IT, parking. Right. OK. So you haven't heard from anybody and um, we don't need to decide this today. We can talk about it again in May, in April, and in May. Okay. And you have the questions that Councilor Bidwell um, asked if you, for uh, parking and rec, parks and rec? Uh, he would like to know about the, how the transition will go to the new facility. Outreach. Trends in enrollment in summer camp and outreach to minority communities and how well are they working. Yeah, in addition to any and all items that they consider important to bring to our attention.
Okay, so that brings us up to um, item six, and I think we're probably not going to be going down to the cups, but let's, uh, I was going to ask you, Councillor, if you, did you send that to everyone or just to me? No, I, I emailed it out, and I, and I believe it's okay. uh, in what just got handed out, too. Did you get a copy of this? I, I read the email. Okay. I think that is Councillor O'Donnell's. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm all set. I think I have you. Okay. You he's have he's one. committed it to memory. Yeah, I, I think he's All right. So it looks great to me. That looked all looked fine. Um, I'll open it up to. It's not something we need to, you know, um, take and we don't need to make a motion or anything on this. We'll just talk about this process that we, we said we would try to put together. So we did well put together something that seems very clear to me. Anyone else? One item, uh, um, I think you did note that um, the person who, the person would not be included in the discussion, and I'm not really sure why you would want, why, what, what the purpose of that is. The person who did the um, communication with the prospective uh, applicant the prospective nominee would not participate in the discussion with, with the other counselors. Mm -hmm. no, well, if that's the way it reads, that's not what I meant. Oh, no, I, okay. I, 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 I was merely saying that. Says so the committee member. Um, we'll prepare a, you know, just a. a I don't have that. It says here the proposed appointment will Does then be placed on here. I'll just give it to you. It's right here. Proposed appointment will then be placed on the agenda of the next full council, then taking into consideration the report from the committee member reviewing the proposed assignment, the results of the review. That's not it. Where is it um, saying that the, the member? You may, in, in, in item two? Three. Three. Oh, yes, yeah, right, right, right. The committee member will not deliberate with other committee members on the merits of a proposed appointment during this process. That I meant in advance of the meeting. Yeah. Yes. That, oh. That, that, you know, if 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 if, oh, if, if this okay. person should so it should be should, clear that in advance of the meeting should be put in there just because it just meant it's it sounded like to me will not deliberate meant no, that it, they it, shouldn't it, it, participate be, in that. Just to be certain that, that if this person and and by prepare a brief report I didn't even mean it would have to be in writing it could just be an oral report presented at the next meeting but if if, if somebody were to put together their their, their, their observations from their interview. And, 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 and why would you and not want to have a person talk to, I mean, right now we're, we're bound by open meeting law where we can't have a quorum have a discussion at all. But why would you not want the committee member, why, for example, if you were going to be speaking with Natalia mm -hmm. Munoz mm -hmm. and then it occurred to you that something, you, you, you know, that something, you, you recall something that Councillor O'Donnell had mentioned once before. Why? Why wouldn't you want to be able to call Councillor O'Donnell and ask? I absolutely, him about it? I absolutely could, so long as it was just the two of us. I, I was maybe I'm being hypersensitive to the fact that right. So if but if we send this out, we'll email, not then deliberate with other co committee members. I think it, I, I think we could strike that whole section only because it's not. I mean, I think we all know that we can't communicate amongst a quorum. We can't have serial communications. Either that or be more specific and just to repeat what the, you'd be more specific and say, shall not deliberate with a quorum of other committee members. Would, the, would that be better? That would, that would be okay. more accurate. Did you get that, Pam? So it's in um, item number three. The committee member will then prepare a brief report to be presented at the next committee meeting. The committee member will not deliberate with a quorum of other committee members on the merits of a proposed appointment during this process, during any time prior to the meeting. Okay, so that just reminds, it, it's, a remi it's a bold reminder of our constraints under open meeting law. So for an example, say he did call Natasha. Natalia, yep. Okay, mm -hmm. speaking to her, and after his telephone call with her, 
Yeah. If he has a question, yeah, he can still go ahead and call you. One other member of the committee. He can he can talk to one other member right. of the committee. And if and if I want to share what I what I learned, right. I either present it verbally at the meeting, at the or if I, if, if I want folks to have it in advance, I can send it out to everybody, but just for the do not reply. Right. Exactly. Right. We can always use those reminders at the open meeting law. Can you do that? You, you, yeah, you, you just you, sit, do not reply. You can, send out, you can send out the report mm -hmm. to be reviewed prior to the committee. You can send out a report that says, this is for discussion at the committee. You should be careful that the report doesn't contain we should approve this person. Exactly. Because that is expressing an opinion on something. Right. Yeah. Do you think, that, do you think we need to actually spell that out in the procedure? Because some of these I, things, I, I think, think, are pretty should, much, I think it's just, that, you know. Well, first of all, I, mean, I think what Council Bidwell put together is excellent. And it's yes. something that was very, very much needed. I think will facilitate our work and make things clearer. And I don't know if we actually want to have a motion to adopt it and just have a, a Yes, I, I, a second thought I think we should, but I want to okay. make another amendment then. Or okay. ask, ask, I'll, I'll let you finish what you okay, said. Okay, sorry, just briefly. But, and, and if so, I think then it's a public statement. We want the public to know that to the extent we conduct interviews outside of the committee that we don't, so you're right, it is redundant, but we're just, we're, we're affirming that we're not deliberating on a, a subject outside of the committee. To add further redundancy, okay. in, I'm, I'm going to ask in, in item number three, then, so to, you know, just to make sure that we're all in our hypersensitivity. The committee member will then prepare a brief report, parenthesis, which does not include any recommendation, and parenthesis, to be presented. Does that, does, does that make sense? It does not include what? Any recommendation. Or deliberation. Any recommendation or deliberation. Okay. It is a slippery slope. Why don't you start doing that? It is. It, it, well, let's keep going, though. I mean, you know, <laughs> like make reference to open meeting law, you know, make reference by statute. Do you want to do that? I, I, I think what you just suggested is, is yeah. sufficient. I think, I think it's I, I, I do. the way it is. I do. Okay. All right. Um, but otherwise, very clear. Uh, I think so. For so right now, I will take the liberty then of. Um, yeah, well, so I'll ask then for a motion to accept the proposed process with those amendments. Can you read that off again? The amendment was item number three. The committee member will then prepare a brief report, parenthesis, which does not include a recommendation or deliberation, end parenthesis, mm -hmm. to be presented at the next committee meeting. The committee member will not deliberate with a quorum of other committee members on the merits of the proposed appointments during this process. And you want that prior to the meeting? Prior to the meeting. Does that make sense, Pam? Yes. You got it all? Mm -hmm. All right. Got it? Go over right there. <laughs> you know there's no corrupt appointments to the Board of Almoners this way. So. Yeah. Okay. So um, all those in favor, or, well, I'll ask a motion. Does everybody have a motion? Make a motion. Okay, moved and seconded to accept the proposed process with those changes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Abstentions? None. Motion carries to uh, somehow uh, attach this proposed process. It's not going to be attached anywhere to our um, rules or anything, is it? Are you talking about no. <clears throat> adding this to the rules? No. We're just going to have this. Just be our own committee. Okay. Our our committee our rule. Okay. So we have this. We have this process. This process now understood. I hate to keep dwelling on the past, but I need a motion for you to accept the calendar because there was something that came up about added committees that wasn't approved the last time. Oh. Okay. So let's go back to the calendar. Let's go back to the calendar and. Mm -hmm. um, 
given that some of the some of the calendar may have changed since our last meeting, well, I'll ask if everyone will accept it as written right now, with the change of June 6th to June 7th. And may I ask is um, why I make the, let me ask this first. If I may is the motion also to vote to extend invitations to all the all the people scheduled. Oh, was that not was that not in the last? Did we not? I thought we did. It's did funny. we extend invitations at the last time? It's funny. It's my fault with the rules because it has this weird provision that says certain departments we put on the agenda in advance and then vote on. And of course, last meeting was our first meeting, so they were on. Because well, I think that the mayor's office has said that they want to be the mm -hmm. so they they want to extend the invitations, right? Oh, authorize the asking of an invitation, you know, whatever. However you want to put it, but uh, well, uh, I'll let you put it. Yeah, I, I would just say I mean, the vote would be to uh, approve the schedule and ask that the invitations be made. Is there a second? A second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Thank you. Is, is that good now, Pam? Yep. We're good, and we're good with number six. So I'll go ahead and. Um, assign the reappointment of Natalia Munoz to the Human Rights Commission in keeping with item two of the proposed process. The committee chair will assign to a committee member the task of communicating with the proposed appointee about their desire to serve and their qualifications to serve. In addition, the committee member may elect to speak with the chair. So whoever takes this assignment should know that she is the chair of the board or commission to which the appointment is to be made, inquiring about how this appointment would contribute to the work of the commission or board. But I think one part um, that was on here is that Councilor Bidwell asked if the names of the existing members of the Human Rights Commission could somehow be sent. So um, we can't act on this, whoever should take that. I'll, I'll, I'll ask if there's somebody who was interested in taking this before I make the assignment. If, if it were assigned to me, I may not, I might not even call Ms. Munoz because I, I would be so confident of it. So certain circumstances, maybe, well, you could certainly assign it to me. Okay, to unless there's somebody who wants to speak to Right, Ms. Munoz, exactly. and, I would, right. and if you wouldn't defer. Right. I certainly would defer. Did we find out if she's asked? Yes, she does. She is interested. Oh, okay. We got an email back. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to ask about that. There was some confusion about that. That was a confusion. Yeah. That was a confusion, and she said she is she is interested. Oh, good. Okay. So do either of you want to speak with Natalia Munoz? No. I would be glad to defer to her. He's not going to call her. He said. But he's going to exercise his discretion. Yes. His, his, right. His I just thought if there's, if there's anybody who wants to actually speak with her. Okay. But you do you do want Pam to send a list to everybody of the other members of the commission? If if, if it's easily available, that's that. Well. And, and I don't know if to just I, I I find it helpful looking at someone's. Okay. Uh, Proposal the background information to, will include, committee, it's all. pretty clear in the process, will include the existing members of the Board of Commission. Where possible. Right. Say that again? It just says where possible. Oh, it does? Oh, yes, where possible. Okay. It's, a, it, it's possible. We have it. It's on the website. Okay. But do you, want, do you want, in addition to the information we know is on the website, or, do you, or is that going to be sufficient? I would be glad somewhere. to just go look on the website myself. Is there anybody oh. else who actually wants Pam to get a list of the committee members and send it to, to them? Otherwise, they'll take it on their own initiative to look at the website and see those names? Counselor? It's up to you. Okay. Do you want, do you want Pam to send you a, a list of the names? No. Do you want Pam to send you a list of the names? No? Okay. Right. So, yeah. while that's possible, it's not necessary. But thank you for being willing to, should you be asked, mm -hmm. we know how willing I would just send you the link. Black <laughs> 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 right. Oh, okay. girl. 
All right, so then that takes care, but you, you should know then that if you are going to have a conversation with her, you can't do anything about it until after March 10th. The committee can take up, well, the committee can take up after March 10th, so you can actually call her today if you wanted to speak with her. We can't make a recommendation until after. We can't do that, right. Until yeah. after he talks with her, and then it comes to me. He, she, he's he's going to bring that back at our April 4th meeting, and with a rec and then we will make a recommendation at that meeting for the full council. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, seeing no other items, uh, unless I'll ask, is there any new business? Yeah. No new business, but just just as a, as a heads up, I'll just I'll just talk about the uh, the, the April meeting. And I know this isn't uh, very good behavior on the part of a new committee member, but I will be um, out of town on vacation on April 4th. So I will, go with you. So I will not be able to attend that meeting, just so you know. Okay. Well, your questions won't be. Well, you'll get well, them. we'll still take them up, and we'll, so you'll we'll get a report back. Okay. Anybody else? Just Is, is anybody else planning on not being here? Okay. All right. I'll ask if there's a motion to adjourn. Move adjourn. Okay. And seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? None. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.